So I wanted to dive a little bit more into channels when you're dealing with Go because you probably are at some point going to need a Go routine and channels are a great way for your Go routines to kind of communicate and send data to each other. The first thing we want to talk about is Go routine. So in Go, you have the ability to basically spin off additional processing that runs on a different thread and churns through some data. So to do that, you can just go ahead and write the keyword Go and then you can make a function and then you could do something in that function. Let's just go ahead and like print out uh, hello. So this is a Go routine, it's gonna run separately, but when I run this code, notice that it doesn't actually print out hello. The issue is that the main function finishes and it just kills the program before this Go routine finishes running. Okay, so I'm gonna introduce you to another concept and that is called a wait group. So I'm gonna say var wg sync dot wait group. And that is a way to basically add kind of like an incrementer and a decrementer so that Go knows when you've spun up another Go routine. So I'm gonna say WG and then I'll say add. I'll just say one. This is basically representing that I just spun up a Go routine. Now technically I guess you could do it before as well. And inside the Go routine, you probably wanna say a defer WG.done. And then I'm gonna go down here and say WG.wait. All right, so this is introducing us to another concept of when you spin up different Go routines, you have to tell the main program that you need to wait a little bit until these Go routines finish. So if I were to keep adding some, let's just add one more. Notice that I'll have to basically go here and increment the wait group again before I spin up that one. Okay, let's just run it again. It should print out hello, hello, and it did. So let's expand upon this a little bit more. Let's go ahead and abstract this away to a function called reader. And we're gonna go ahead and paste in this code. And instead of WG being like a global, we're gonna actually pass that in. So I'm gonna say WG is a pointer to a wait group. And we could just go ahead and spin up a reader with go reader. This, we'll do ambersand, that's to get a pointer to the object. Go ahead and delete that, and I'll go ahead and delete this as, as well. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add two right here. I'm going to change this to a print line so it doesn't look as bad. And then we're also going to give this an ID, which will just be um, a number, which we could do int. And this will be reader of one. And this will be reader of two. And we can actually just do a print F of reader ran percent D. Go ahead and just let that autocomplete. All right. So at this point, if I run this, it should say reader ran two, reader ran one. All right, so now let's say that we wanted to basically have all these readers process on some data concurrently. Well, the way you could do that is you could use something called channels, which was the point of this video, but I kind of had the work up to introducing channels. So for channel, let's just go ahead and make a channel. So you ch make, and then you do chan int. Um, depending on what you're passing in, so in our case, we're going to do ints. You could pass in strings, you could pass in whatever. Um, and we're going to pass that channel to the readers. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a channel here, and I'll put a channel here. Let's go up here, and we're going to have that take in channel. Now, the syntax for a channel is a little bit different. This is how you kind of do it. So, what we're doing is we're passing a channel into the reader function, and you can have multiple readers churning on data and concurrently really fast, depending on how many CPUs you have in your machine, et cetera. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna say four, and then we're gonna go ahead and just let AI do it for us because we're lazy. And we're gonna go ahead and just look at this code real quick and explain what's going on. So basically what we're doing is we're inf doing an infinite loop. Just keep on looping and grab data from the channel. Okay, so we're getting the integers that are passed into a channel and then we just print them out down here. So over here, if the channel has been closed, we just go ahead and return so that we get out of this reader function and our program is just not stuck doing an infinite loop forever. So now we have two readers that will just continuously read from this channel and do something with it, right? Right now it's just printing out messages. So let's go over here. I'm gonna add a couple more. I'll add two more. So we'll have four total. This could be three or four. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just do a for loop. So I'll say for int i uh, is equal to zero. We'll do less than 100. And we'll just go ahead and keep pushing data into this channel. So this is the syntax for kind of like taking a value. This could be a number, a string, a struct, whatever. Push it into this channel. And these readers are just going to continuously process off 
values that are on that channel until you basically close the channel. Okay, so I'm gonna say close and then I'm gonna close the channel down here. And then I'm also just going to make sure we're waiting. So at this point, we can run this code. And as you can see, it's turning over that data. Various readers are kind of reading the values and processing them, which is something that's very useful, especially when you're dealing with business logic that needs to spin off and generate a bunch of different things. You want this to work as fast as possible. And this is one approach to doing it. It's basically a built-in queuing system with like round robin where all these different readers can kind of process on these channels and get through the data um, as fast as possible. All right, so that's all I wanted to share with you in this video. I just want to kind of give you a nice little crash course into channels, learned a little bit about weight groups. We learned about um, getting off go routines, how to pass and insert data into a channel and also how to read from those channels. If there's anything that you feel like I should elaborate on, leave a comment, I can maybe do that. But other than that, hope you guys enjoyed. Give me a thumbs up, comment, and have a good day. Happy coding.